Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuser Education. Um, we are discussing random variables. Um, now, this lecture is about the um, expectation and actually sum of two different random variables. Um, expectation of sum basically should be equal to the sum of expectations. That's the theorem which I'm going to prove. Uh, I recommend you to go to unizor.com and um, watch this lecture from this website as well as read the notes to this lecture which are right on the side from the video itself. Um, it's very important actually to read the notes because it presents you a certain different uh, maybe perspective to the same um, educational material. Alright, so um, sum of two random variables. That's what we're talking about today. Um, first of all, we all remember what um, the uh, sample space is. I use the letter omega about this. Sample space is basically a combination of elementary events. In this case, it's m elementary events. These are possible results of the, uh, of, of the random experiment. Now, each of these are mutually independent, of course, and there are certain probabilities associated with each one of them. It's called the probability measure, if you wish. So each element, probability of each uh, elementary event uh, with index i is equal to the number pi. Now, all pi's are obviously non-negative, and some of them equals to one, and they basically represent um, the frequency of occurrence of this particular element uh, if you are conducting the same experiment many, many, many times. And the more you, uh, the more times you conduct the experiment, the closer the frequency of occurrence of certain event will be to this particular value. So that's kind of a statistical approach to probabilities. Now, let's assume we have a random variable, which is basically a function defined on each elementary event. Well, it can be, for instance, a winning amount if you are playing poker, and these are all different results of the poker game. Or um, it can be a, a temperature of the person randomly chosen from from the crowd. Um, I mean, it can be anything. So there is certain random experiment which results in some elementary event, and with this elementary event is associated with certain numerical function. Um, as I was saying, it can be amount of winning or temperature or uh, some reading of some uh, gadget, etc., etc. Now we are interested in um, the concept which I was explaining before as expectation. So expectation of the random variable which takes values x1, etc., xm on the corresponding elementary events uh, depends obviously uh, on um, probabilities of these events and the values the random variable takes um, for each event. So the expectation of random variable C in this case is equal to probability of the first uh, element times its value as, an, as a random variable plus the second etc. up to the very end. So that's um, a, an expectation or expected value or mathematical expectation of a random variable um, C and I was um, actually putting these values basically it means that the value of the random variable if uh, a random uh, if, if elementary events uh, uh, e i's is happening is x i's. That's what basically this means. 
So we have certain number of elementary events, we have certain probabilities they occur, and we have a certain random variable, uh, the value of which depends on the elementary event, and this is the expectation of this elementary, uh, of this random variable. Now, so that's number one. That's my first. Now, let's assume that I have a second uh, sample space, which contains completely different elementary events, doesn't really matter, with its own measure of probabilities, which is Q, Q of Fj equals to Qj. So all Qj's are obviously the same as, as Pj, uh, as Pi, whatever. They are non-negative and their sum is equal to 1. These are probabilities. Q1, Q2, Q, Q3, etc. up to Qn. And let's assume we have a different random variable eta, which is defined as y1, etc., yn. So eta of fj equals yj. So that's a completely different sample space with its own probabilities of elementary events and its own random variable um, eta defined on this sample space. So we have two different random variables and this random variable also has its own expectation which is equal to q1 y1 plus q2 y2 plus etc plus qn uh, yn. So there are m elementary events in the q in the omega 1 and n elementary events in omega 2. Now, so these are uh, correspondingly um, expectations of two different variables, random variables, defined on two different um, uh, sample spaces. Now, what I would like actually to prove is the following theorem. that expectation of sum of these two variables is equal to sum of their expectations. That's what I have to prove. Now, first of all, if you consider an expectation or expected value of the random variable as the value where it's the values of random variables are concentrated, and examples of this, um, for instance, an example is you measure the temperature of a person randomly picked from a group. Well, there is something which we call normal temperature and considering people in the group are all healthy, their temperature will be basically close to certain normal value. Not exactly equal to, but more or less concentrated around this normal value. Now, if you take a completely different uh, random variable. Um, it can be either a different group of people which you measure temperature or it can be um, I don't know, some kind of uh, measurement of the uh, voltage in, in, in the uh, electric outlet which is supposed to be let's say in, in America it's about 110 volt and in Europe it's 220. It's basically it's a normal value it doesn't mean it's always the same but all the values which you can measure uh, will be concentrated around this normal value. So if you have one random variable with values concentrated around one variable, uh, one particular value, and then another random variable with uh, its values concentrated another, uh, around another um, uh, uh, value, then obviously if you combine them, to, if, you, if you add them together, well, the sum of two random variables must actually be concentrated around some of these concentration numbers, right? It, it looks kind of natural and it, it sounds really plausible. 
Now, this is the intuitive approach to this, but I would like to prove it mathematically. And to prove it mathematically, first of all, I have to understand what's the sum of two random variables is. Well, let's assume our example. One is a temperature, another is voltage. Can I add temperature to a voltage? It looks like it doesn't make sense. Well, actually, well, it doesn't make sense in physics, but this is a number and that is a number, and there is nothing wrong in mathematics with adding two numbers. So, in theory, we kind of understand what it is, but let's try to define it more properly. Okay, so these are not temperature and voltage, these are number and number. So, we, in theory, can c uh, combine them together, we can add them together, but does it make any uh, does it make any kind of a sense? I mean, we are adding one random variable which is defined in one particular sample space to another which is defined in another. It's like two different functions we are adding together but their domains are completely different. Can we do this? Well, that's not an easy thing to do. And, and here is what I suggest you to basically understand as, as the explanation of what is actually uh, Xi plus eta. Well, so we have this particular sample space and we have that particular sample space. Now let's consider a sample space, a new one, which I will um, write as this one. It's basically something which is known as Cartesian product. So if this space contains E1, E2, Em, and this one contains F1, F2, Fn, then this combined is a set of pairs E1, F1, E1, F2, etc. E1, Fn, E2, F1, etc. So you understand all the different pairs of this and this are considered to be elements, elementary events of the new sample space. So, if, for instance, the result of the experiment of uh, checking the temperature is such and such, and the result of checking the voltage is such and such, then I'm combining two experiments together. I'm measuring simultaneously a temperature of a random person and a, a voltage of a, of a random uh, outlet, and combine them into a pair. So a pair is actually the result of my experiment. A pair of two numbers. So a pair of two numbers where this pair is combined is the combination of any from these and any from that is the result of my combined experiment. Now, what's the probability? Well, I don't know the probabilities, but let's just assume that there is some measure of probability defined on this particular um, uh, sample space R which is defined, supposed to be defined on each pair, right? E, I, F, J. And I have some number, R, I, J. I like to write the letter R this way. Okay, so what are these R, I, J? These are probabilities of occurrence simultaneously the element E i and the element F j. So if we simultan simultaneously combine these two experiments into one experiment and measure, then the result of one experiment is e, 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 e i's. Experiment number two will give me F j's and the combination of these has the probability uh, R i j. Nothing wrong with that. Now, my new random variable, zeta, is that how it's written? Zeta. I'm defining, basically, a new random variable defined on this particular space, in a new, brand new space, which is a Cartesian product of two previous spaces. I'm defining this in a very simple manner zeta of E1, EI, FJ equals to 
c of e i plus eta of f j, which is equal to x i plus y j. So that's the definition. This is a new random variable defined on a new sample space with new probabilities, which I don't know actually, and the values which are equal to a sum. So whenever we have, as a result of my two random experiments, one this and one this, I have a result EI FJ, then the value of my random variable on this result of my combined experiment is x well, i plus y j where x i's are uh, the values of uh, random variable c defined on this one and i j's I, are the results of the random variable eta on this particular space so this brings me to basically a, a relatively rigorous definition of what is a sum of two random variables. So yes, we cannot just simply add two functions defined on two different domains uh, just as an addition, but using certain logic and using the Cartesian product, etc., we can. In this case, that's exactly how it is done. All right. Now I define basically this, and now I can Based, well, now I understand what I'm talking about, right? What is an expectation? What expectation is, as any um, uh, expectation of any random variable, um, the expectation of this particular variable equals to well, let's just use zeta. Well, that's sum of probabilities times values, right? So, um, uh, this is R11 uh, times X1 plus Y1 plus R12 times X1 plus Y2 plus etc. plus R1N times x1 plus yn plus r21 x2 plus y1 plus r22 x2 plus y2 now this would be r2n x2 plus yn plus etc. And the last one would be Rm1 xm plus y1 plus Rm2 xm plus y2 etc. Uh, Mn xm plus yn. So as we see we have m times n different elements in this sum because m times n is the number of the elements in the combined uh, sample space because it's all of these with all of those m times n so each one of them has the corresponding probability which is r let's say ij and uh, the value is xi xj and i have to summarize it with i index i uh, changing from 1 to m and index uh, j uh, changing from 1 to m so that's basically what the expectation of this sum is about well it looks complex but it's really kind of a structural it's very simple you just use the indices much easier would be if i can use the, the sigma sign in mathematics i just don't want to use it in this particular case all right so um, let me um, uh, point one very interesting property of these probabilities R. If I will combine Ri1 plus Ri2 plus etc. plus Rin, what does it mean? 
It's a combination of certain elementary events, which are first experiment results in E1, EI, and the second experiment results in F1. Now, this is the first experiment also in results in EI, and the second in F2, etc., etc. And the last one is the first experiment results in EI, and the second experiment in Fn. So what does it mean when we add these probabilities together? That's probability of the first experiment resulting in EI and the second experiment either in F1 or F2, etc. or Fn, which means everything. So we don't really care. It can be anything. Um, so basically it's equal to the probability of EI, which is PI if you remember that the probabilities of each elementary events. These are P1, Pn, and this is Q1, Qn. Now, similarly, if I will fix the second index, R1j plus R2j plus etc. plus Rmj. Now, what is this? It's the probability of the first experiment ending in either E1 or E2, etc., or EM, and the second one being FJ. So, which means we don't really depend on the result of the first experiment, and it's equal to probability, measure of probability, I used letter Q in that case, of FJ, which is equal to QJ. So, these are very important properties of our combined probability. So if you're combining the probability of two events, but you don't really depend on the second event, so the sum of the probabilities of the first event going to a particular result and the second experiment going to any event out of anything, that's basically the result is just the probability of the first, or in this case, the second experiment. All right? Now, let me just point out very important property. What if these two events are completely independent? So, the probability of the first being EI and the second being FJ I write it down. So, for independent um, events probability of E I E J uh, F J which is R I J is actually the combination of probability of E I and probability of F J. If you remember for independent events and we were talking about the probability of the combined event uh, if these two events are independent is equal to the, comp uh, the product of their probabilities. Now, if you don't remember it, uh, I can refer you to one of the previous lectures, which we did. So, in this case, is it, this is equal to PIQJ, uh, right? In which case, this becomes obvious, because what is this? It's PI times Q1, PI times Q2, etc., PI times QN, you factor out PI, and in the parentheses you will have Q1 plus Q2, etc., plus QN, which is the sum of these probabilities, which is 1, and that's why it's equal to PI. So it's obvious for independent events. Now, and this is similar, obviously. Now, for non-independent events, it's still true, but you have to really apply some logic to make sure that this is really true. Now, why did I decide to uh, to use these properties. Very simple. We just have to regroup these differently. Look at this. If I will open these parentheses, it will be R11x1, R01y1, R12x1, R12y2, etc. And I will uh, factor out x1. What will I have? I have x1, and in parentheses, R11, R12, etc., R1n, which is P1.
Now, similarly, the rest of the members in the first line, I don't really look at them right now. I, I will take care of them later. Now, let's consider the second line. Second line is, again, I will x2, x2, and x2, I will parenthesis, uh, I, I will factor out, and in the parenthesis I will have r12, uh, r21, sorry, r22, etc., r2n, and sum of them is equal to p2, etc., up to the very last line, where I can take xm and factor it out, and in the parentheses I will have rm1, rm2, etc., rmn, which is using the same property, pm. But that's not it. I only use the axis. Now let's use y's. Now y's I will group vertically. So this is y1, r11, this is y1, r21, etc., and y1, uh, rm1, which is sum of r11, r21, etc., rm1. Using this property, this would be q1. Now, similarly, y2 would be sum of r12, r22, etc., rm2. So the second index is fixed to 2, so it would be q2. And as you understand, the last one would be similar, which is y, n, p, n. So that's what this particular sum is all about. And this is equal to, this is no other but expectation of C, and this one is no other but expectation of eta. And that's the end of the proof. And as you see, in case of independent events, I don't really need these properties because I can put P1 uh, times Q1 here, P1 times Q2 here, etc. And then again, I just regroup and factor out things and that will be exactly the same, the same result. So, um, the whole theorem is really very, very simple, except you just have to write maybe a relatively long uh, 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 set of additions here. But the idea is simple. Intuitively, it's very much understood that the uh, expectation of the sum of two variables is the sum of expectations. What I would like actually to point out is for you to understand the concept of the sum of two random variables defined on completely two different uh, sample spaces, that you have to really consider the pairs of elementary events from this and from that, from this and from that. So it's like a Cartesian product. So that's very important. And uh, another important factor is I'm not using the independence of these two things. I'm logically deriving these two um, equalities, which are kind of obvious if you consider them, and just use this property to prove this, this theorem. Well, that's it for today. I suggest you to read again the notes for this lecture uh, on the unizor.com. Uh, notes basically contain the same uh, logic, the same uh, set of thoughts, but when you read it again, it, 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 it's better understood, actually. So, thanks very much and good luck. <laughs>